Anthony Ferraro, and Mancina, two blind guys collide to bring you Four Bad Eyes Podcast. Yo, yo, yo. Hello? Are you there? Hello. Hello. I'm here. He's Welcome here. back. Ah. I was just all up in my camera, dude. Oh, uh, you giving the grill? Grilling the I was grill. giving the grill and nude. The grilling and chilling on the camera. Welcome back. Four bad eyes. Four I'm Ben Mancina. Anthony Ferraro here. Welcome back. I hope you are enjoying. Thank you to everyone that has subscribed to the YouTube. We are growing, following the Instagram, everything. Yes. You guys are the best. Keep Doesn't mean much. Those, keep sending in those questions and sending in that love and really love that support. Yeah, those subscribes, man, mean a lot to us, a little to you. So keep them coming. Speaking of uh, cameras, actually, <laughs> too. Grilling the camera. What? <laughs> Took about 10 minutes to get Dan s- centered in the camera. Oh, there. centered, yeah. We had Kelly Walborn helping us out. It's Kelly Ferraro. <laughs> her, vo- <laughs> her voicemail says Walborn. I was giving her crap for it the other day. I was like, you need to change your voice. It's because they're clients. I know. She's like, all oh, my clients won't know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, she's going to hear us and get mad. The boss right. is going to get mad. No, the boss. You know, she's a beautiful the... wife. Yes. My wife. But... I don't have a wife yet. <laughs> soon. Getting married soon. Getting married. Going to look at venues? I'm going to start looking at venues. Yeah. Ooh, what are you going to look at? Uh, there's like two we're looking at. They're like outdoor, like big barn, you know, open kind of deal get married right on the spot and then head over to the barn for a good old party dude that's the way to do it are you, wait yeah, so you get married like separately on a different <clears throat> spot it's like on the same grounds you know so it's just like there's like a little area by one of them is like a little area by a pond and then you walk over and just have the reception oh that's and all that or yeah. which one's the reception is that the party yeah, or is that the, the party yeah ceremony dinner and ceremony. all ceremony yeah, yeah, yeah no yeah. so that's exactly what we wanted to do that was and that's what we did like yeah outdoor especially with like the covid stuff and yep it was just dude <laughs> planning a wedding was insane yeah i'm not looking forward to it <laughs> yeah but you don't have 60 cousins i know 60 cousins well do you no i got a pretty big family on that side I, have, I think it's pretty decent. We're looking at like 175, like 200 max. Yeah, I have such but a like, big family. My brother's Nick, my brother Nick's wedding was like 300. Yeah, mine was like, it was supposed to be like 150. And I think like 250 <laughs> people just showed up. Yeah, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, and like that's, dude, I never really realized it until I got married, like about like the catering and stuff. Like you really yeah. need that head count. But thankfully, yeah. Our vision was to do like a huge barbecue style buffet, and we uh-huh. had that. But we had a um, we had a food truck come like late night. That's what we want to do yeah, too. So, so this was our wedding. We had it was on our friend's property, ten acres in Maine. Shout uh-huh. out to Dan West, dude. The guy, it was amazing. Dan West let us get married on his property. This, it's his second property. He lives in Massachusetts, and his, his second property is in Maine. And he like. Uh-huh. It was a dump. Like people dumped all this, you know, trash on this land and all, like everything you imagine, like beds and like mattresses, TVs, <laughs> like everything in this place. And he bought it super cheap or whatever. And like for the next five, ten years, he literally just cleaned it up nonstop, yeah. just rebuilt this thing. And it's all solar, like off the grid. Uh-huh. So, and he's an ex like stunt rider and stuff. So like he used to do Harley stunt riding and he's got like a track a dirt track built around his house that he built. yeah you're telling me a bit Dude, about he that he does Sounds like four wheeling and stuff and it's just insane he calls it a hell ride so he takes you in the in the uh atv thing it's like a uh, side by side uh-huh. and it's got a roll cage on it and he you hold on to these things and he literally just whips it he, it's got the uh hydraulics and stuff like the shocks on it and you go off these jumps and it's insane like you almost tip over 
but Did, is that what kept? He blasts like Kid Rock when he when you get in there, like he, the music's just blaring and he gets all pumped up. Is that what Kelly came in on, dude? This is I'm on the highway <laughs> to hell. Oh, As kidding. we so we <laughs> get married at one one like we got married at one. It was in the day, and uh-huh. uh, Kelly like so <laughs> the guy like actually, one part of the land, like a section of the land. Yeah, so a section yeah. of the land they built this like altar thing, like all. You know, this was all DIY wedding. Like, we yeah. built it from scratch, which is crazy. Like, going to a venue is a lot easier because they have everything done for you. Yeah. But we did it all from nothing. And it's a very, like, gritty, like, rustic kind rustic, of property, like yeah. land, you know? Like, it's crazy. And uh, we got married, and that we had the ceremony, and, like, the chairs were all set up, and then everyone had to bring their chairs, like, over to under the tent, so, like, because, you know. Uh, and bring your chairs. The, the guy picks <laughs> us up in the side-by-side with the song blasting by uh, Guns N' Roses called, it's like, I, uh, what is it? I used to love her, but I had to kill her. And, like, that was literally the song, and he took us oh, around the track. God. Like, it was his vision for so long. It was just so funny. And it was an amazing way, dude. We had, like, you know, my friends end up jamming late night. It was just, we went from yeah. one in the afternoon until four in the morning. And then we, we had a hotel booked for two nights, the night of our wedding and the night after. And then we were going to uh-huh. go to, uh, like, upstate New York on Lake Champlain. And we ended up staying in. We rented a Volkswagen camper bus, like, for the wedding. And we ended yeah. up just staying in that, that night. Um, in that night. It was stay. amazing. It was so, it, I couldn't have had like a more fun wedding and like yeah. dude when we were setting up for it Kelly uh we were setting up for the wedding and we we're setting up the tent and it has these like death pillars in it like these metal pillars and, oh yeah oh, and yeah. I'm walking through uh the tent oh yeah you told me you and, said dude, this I rocked my head so hard Kelly's like somebody bubble wrap get, these. we need to get this bubble wrap <laughs> next day it's like bubble wrapped with like beautiful like uh <laughs> all this like stuff around it to make it look like decorations yeah. it was incredible but no it was yeah. that was a wedding of a, and the tactile was, wedding dress dude. dude that was the big one as seen on usa <laughs> this morning or what USA was it? today and never all that. Tact- no that was above and beyond honestly because yeah. wedding dresses i don't know if you ever felt them before but they like the, my vision of them was always like i've been married twice yeah. super <laughs> super frumpy like just this weird materials and like weird yeah. textures kind of like <laughs> just because they're for the pictures you know but yeah she had like velvet and silk and cotton it was crazy with like these lace things and then this crazy velvet jacket with this like fringe hanging off the arms that like tassel things and it was uh-huh. it was so cool sick hot man beautiful bride <sighs> we're actually trying to plan our honeymoons <laughs> Where are you going? I you might go to Hawaii, dude. Do it. She don't want to do it. Hawaii. No, Astro I just LA. don't want to do it after Cali because it's too, too much. rushed, kind of. I want to figure out like, yeah. what to do. I don't know what travel situations are right now. Mm-hmm. I just want to do like a res- all-in-one like resort yeah, all-inclusive where it's just like and chill. endless drinks and food and just, and just chill. chill. Like, but that's the thing. I, sh- I wrestle with like, do I want to do that or if i'm gonna be in this sick place like hawaii i'm gonna want to see some like go explore yeah. like some freaking uh yeah hawaii waterfalls yeah. and shit and like there's just so many places to see in hawaii yeah i would do that in like jamaica or something and just be chilling on the beach dude exactly yeah hawaii you gotta love hawaii you gotta hop around dude saint jamaica has like so many cool things too though that's the problem yeah I went to Jamaica once on a cruise. Uh, when I go to places, I like have all <clears> these <throat> things I want to do, but then I end up getting like one or two of them done, you know, when I'm in that time period. Yeah, me and Heather are like pretty lazy when it comes to going on vacation. Like we can just chill. Like we got good food and drinks, too. Like we can just, like, I could just chill in one spot for a week and just hang out on the beach, dude. Do beach nothing. Life. Yeah, All about beach life. Grew up. Beach we life. also tossed around the idea of doing like Alaska for our honeymoon. Kelly brought up Alaska, actually. We were, yeah, and then, I think it's all 
I think it's like dark there, like twenty four seven right now, isn't it? Oh well, yeah, it depends on when you go. Yeah, yeah, I think the probably right now light, winter. Right? Yeah, yeah, and then it's light all the time. Yeah, <laughs> dude, you go salmon fishing. But there, yeah, you have to hop around and go cruise and explore. Dude. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, There's so many places yeah. I want to go. I haven't been out of the country in a while though. Ooh, so I know. I haven't been out since like yeah, October of like twenty. Twenty? Last place you 21, I think? No, probably 20. I haven't been out of the country since Had to be 20? of 2020. I, was it 20? Yeah, it must yeah. have been 20, I guess. Yeah. What What was the last place you went? Japan was the last time I was on a country. Oh, Tokyo? Yeah. That's sick. Tokyo? I was in Montreal. Hmm doing uh i actually got a i was fighting in the pan american games and i got a or pan american championships in montreal and i got a concussion i was like i was doing so good too and i just got i was fighting this kid from brazil who i have like a rivalry with uh -huh. we get in like serious like brawls when we fight like the to the point where, so like, you remember I his name? Like, was this the video I watched of you fighting him? I feel like it was a Brazilian. No, no, that, was no a, that was a that was a Japanese yeah, yeah. kid. No, so this kid, his name, what was his name Lou Louis Pimentel or something. Um, but he's Pimentel? Brazilian, and he like, dude, he uh, our matches were so intense, and like we both kind of had these looks. Like he's albino and has like this crazy beard and like hair look and like. I get my hair braided every time I f go to tournaments because I can't deal with, like, you know, it all loose and stuff. Yeah. So we have this, like, look, and, like, we're freaking, like, literally, like, beating the shit out of each other. Like, it's bad. Like, we get angry, but then we're boys yeah. like, afterwards. <laughs> and I remember we're fighting, we're fighting. We're, like, getting to the point where he's so angry, he's, like, yelling during this match, right? And I'm, like you know just trying to stay in and stay like calm stay focused because if i get all like stressed out and mental i start like fighting really bad mm -hmm. <laughs> and i like he went to throw me and i tried to defend the throw but i'm in air and i tried to defend it like with my head all of a sudden like when he threw <laughs> me down and i he didn't get the point because i literally blocked the throw with my face <laughs> and next thing I know, I'm waking up, dude, to like the lights in the gym. Wow. And I was like, dude, I was, my heart was shattered because it was like a really important tournament. And uh -huh. the points were like super, like you get a lot of points and like I had a really good chance of placing pretty high in that. Mm -hmm. And it was just demoralizing because I remember naughty i was so confused i didn't even know what was going on because i was concussed and i all of a sudden i'm you know they pull me off the mat and i'm like wait what and like i'm sitting on the side like on the bench and all of a sudden i just start crying and like that's something that happens when you get a concussion you just start getting like, one of the things is like emotions just start going wild yeah and i'm just like no like this is like i'm not concussed like and then yeah. i go to the I go to the like concussion, like the trainer area, and I just get like examined, and they're just like, "You cannot fight." And I'm just like, "Oh no!" Do you said like this is just, like a forfeit? Yeah, was it count as a loss? Yeah, I had to be pulled out of the tournament. Does that match count as a loss? Yeah, but like losses, you don't like really count your losses in June. I don't even know my record. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah, or just mean like point. You guys, so you got like no points for that at all? Or? Yeah, no points. Uh, no points. Dang. Just, just Lewis, I remember, dude. I remember walking outside and it was there was so much snow because it was winter in Montreal, and it was so sunny too, and the oh. sun was blaring off the snow and like the concussion, any light like just it gets intensified. Yeah. And I I remember I just had to put sunglasses on. I couldn't even open my eyes it was brutal. keep your eyes closed yeah oh man and then the rest of the trip kelly and i just like stayed in and, like chilled in this sick airbnb and like ordered food in and stuff and like i was just depressed <laughs> but like kind of got over because i'm like dude we're in this sick country but yeah uh, it's canada dude I don't even, sometimes i don't count canada as another country because i'm so it's so close to detroit 
Yeah, no. But like so Montreal is far it's, enough to be like, yeah, that's. Yeah, but you yeah. can just 15, <clears throat> 15 minutes. Over the bridge, yeah, yeah. to Windsor. It's like right there. That's crazy. Yeah. Canada. Canada's sick. I drove up, we drove up to Canada like five, probably five years ago now. Did you go through like the, drove up. the border and stuff? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, you got to go to the border. <clears throat> What's that like? Did they search your whole car and everything? Yeah, it's mellow. Like sometimes they'll pull you over the side and they like search your car and all that, ask you a few more questions, but nothing really. I went one time when I was, uh, went to get a tattoo when I, I think I was, it must have been 17 because I wasn't 18 Which tattoo? Year. The shoe on my, like my belly, and it says roll forever. Oh, sick. It's like a shoe with a little skateboard on it. It's pretty bad, but <laughs> we got stopped. We got, we're going driving my buddy's car and his car is like a mess, dude. Like his trunk is filled with just like hockey gear, all kinds of crap. And then of course they pull us over and like the guy comes out and he's got like a vest on with like all these pockets, like pants with all these pockets, a belt with like, all these like accessories, like handcuffs, like gun, mace. Oh. And he walks up to the car and he's like feeling around all of his pockets. He's like, Oh, I don't have a flashlight. Dude. I got a flashlight. Oh it's like, what? And he was just rubbing to the trunk and then he let us go. And then we drove there and then we found out that there was a tattoo convention going on and all the tattoo shops were closed. It's like, everybody was gone. So <laughs> it was just like a bust. That's crazy. We just turned around and came home. Dude, my buddy. Yeah. Uh, wait, so you didn't even go? We went, but I didn't get my tat. I didn't get my. I didn't get tatted. I had to go back like the next weekend or something like that. How many of your tattoos did you get that you regret? Do you regret that one? Well, I only have two. I don't, know, I don't really regret them, especially now. I don't even see them, so I don't even. Like, I don't even. <laughs> I literally don't even think about them at all until did someone's you ever like, get another "Oh, one? you tatted?" I'm like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I am." Would you uh, I don't know. Maybe. If you tattoo me. You have four bad eyes tat. Once we hit 100K, yeah. you can tap me up. Tat I don't think I would do a four bad eye. I don't think I would do like a company or anything like that. Yeah. I would probably do a BSM tat, like Bushwhack Skate Mafia, my old skate crew. <laughs> That's like only one that I might do. Yeah. Somewhere hidden though. But like I said, it doesn't really matter, dude. How many tats? Wait, you tied it up? I only have one on my back one. for my brother. Uh, it's like a um. You had the big dragon with throwing <laughs> the fireball. First one time I asked Dan about uh if he had any tattoos. Oh. He's like, yeah, dude, I have a um, I have full back, a full back tat that's a dragon, and it breathes fire that goes down my arm that turns into a snake, dude. And I like, forget what I said. So I going this whole like detailed tat, and I'm the whole time you say this, I'm like, whoa, like envision what? this whole tattoo, like, dude, this is sick, like that's crazy, dude. I'll, and I'm like, how long did that take? <laughs> he was like, like ten hours, dude. I, was like, <laughs> I couldn't believe it that he finally told me. Like two minutes later, I just. <laughs> Oh my so god! Yeah, but no, mine's like a, <laughs> it's like a sunset with the sunset or sunrise. You can't really; it's whatever you want. And then, uh, yeah. so like my brother, I always like kind of whenever when he died, like a lot of times butterflies would come around, and like mm -hmm. like monarch butterflies specifically. Like when uh, I did a paddle out for his birthday, where we just paddle out in the ocean and kind of mm -hmm. say some words, throw some roses a monarch butterfly like flew over and just right over it and it was crazy like yeah. my buddy caught it and actually kelly caught it and uh the roses were floating in the wave so i got like the wave with roses floating in it and um it says uh jkl like or no sorry it says ollie on it so like my uh -huh. name and then yeah. it's got it's just cool it's got a lot of color work and stuff i got it in uh on my first Cross country busking tour in Austin, Texas. I like. Skeptic. Where is it at in your body? It's on my like in your back, your shoulder, my left, sh like my left shoulder, back. Yeah. I want to get another so, tattoo soon too. My brother was the first one to get a tat, and he got it, like up north from some fucking hillbilly dude, and it was oh bad. It was bad, it was like a cross up on the same like upper shoulder blade. And my mom's like, "Nah, <laughs> you're getting that." 
taken off or redone because it was bad. <laughs> Dude, I think I, he, he ended up redoing it. I like I I went through like a whole journey with my tattoo because like I knew it was gonna hurt or whatever. And like it did hurt, but it, it, it put me in such like I was on it on the table for like three hours, I think. It <laughs> put me in such a trance. Like I went deep and I was just like the whole time I was like, I'm doing this like for my brother basically like it was like doing it for someone else and mm -hmm. it like it was such a i don't want to say spiritual like moment but like dude it was emotional and i remember like taking one break and stepping outside and just be like holy shit like you know the feeling of like getting that and then it was just wild and then you're marked like forever with this tattoo you know yeah mine hurt dude i have one on like on my side like my right ribs oh yeah and that one i just had like my arm over my freaking like my eyes just like chilling like oh my god i kept flinching too i was flinching a lot they like, keep moving man i'm like i'm sorry dude. Like, I, can't, I can't help it dude. <laughs> dude. like it hurts my i'll never forget i was in high school still i was visiting my cousin in college at rutgers and he was getting we we were all like chilling he was drinking and stuff and my other cousin was living with him and <laughs> he was like they were pretty drunk and like my one cousin you know goes yo let me uh let me give you a tattoo he's got like this the prison set up like the oh my god yeah whatever it's called and he's he's like yeah yeah give me a, a smiley face on my ankle and everyone starts, always like, goes for the smile going on the ankle dude and he does the circle and it's like bleeding and shit and he's like he's like yelling like it hurts so yeah bad. And have, uh, when he gets the circle done, he like stop. He's like, I can't do it anymore. And now he has just a circle. Dude, just a circle. It's been there for years. He's it's like, a hula hoop, dude. It filled in. It's, it's a, a hula hoop. hoop. Circle of life. Oh yeah, tats. Yeah, I'm not really. I don't know if I really want one again. Yeah. I don't really see him, so it's like it's like I just get it, and then it's like just to I do really it. I like that mm. feeling of getting a tattoo. It's yeah, I didn't like it that much. It's been so long, I don't even remember. But there was definitely a point if I had money, I would have got all tatted up. But yeah, that's how I, after when I was I got young. First tattoo, I was like, damn, I want to get so many tattoos. Yeah. But they're expensive too. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, no. I wanted to ask you about what it was like because our journeys were probably a lot different. What was like going to school like for you? Like, freaking middle school like to high school and on you know like like were you did you have any visual impairment like during the no not at all not at like, all like you could read the chalkboard the whiteboard whatever yeah yeah i could read small print everything yeah oh, <laughs> that didn't affect me how at was all. your handwriting oh, good whatever do you still have like could you still write in print yeah i could still write yeah yeah. I mean, yeah, I get a little sloppy now, but I got to have like good solid border to write on, but yeah, was the writing was decent. I didn't have like super like nice, like girl writing. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You kind of just got by in high school. You were saying, right? Cause you were just skating all the time. I heard you say yeah, on the honey. Barely, yeah. I barely made it through high school and passed dude. <laughs> passed like a D minus. And then you went to college or you didn't go to college right away. No, yeah, I moved, I moved straight to California. To Cali, yeah, yeah, yeah I went to Cali for a while. You went to college, <laughs> dude. I didn't realize on one episode you made the joke about aviation school, but then I heard you talking with Ryan Sickler, and I didn't realize you actually were like trying to get work in the like aviation. Yeah, I have. I have an associate's in aviation management no way that's yeah <laughs> yeah i have like a two-year degree in that you're gonna be the first uh blind pilot, dude. but it's like it wasn't like it was like just learning about like you learn like basics about like weather and stuff for piloting like most people mm -hmm. take that and then they would go on to like like an accredited aviation school like uh in kalamazoo western is a good like aviation school right then you would get like your four year and then you would actually fly and like learn like <laughs> actually how to fly and was stuff. your plan to like work on a plane or to work in the uh, like work just work in like an airport yeah, yeah, yeah get a okay. job like or with like an airline get a job yeah. with an airline do like that some kind sick. of management thing and then get like 
deals on tickets and stuff like that Dude, was the goal on that one. Because you were trying to, the goal almost was to get cheaper flights to be able to go see Cali, right? Yeah, be able to fly, <clears throat> fly way cheaper and be able to travel. Yeah, That's that was wild. the goal back then. I can't believe you're an eight. Ab- Did you? Uh, look- it was sick. I liked it a lot. How I lost it right, school? literally like the last semester is when I lost a big chunk of my vision, and then I had to start getting books like maybe the last two semesters I had to start getting books. Um, put into uh, audio and stuff like that. So I just like, I barely squeaked by then. I think like, I'm like, I think pretty sure the last of my classes were like online. Um, so I didn't even, I don't think I had to go. Yeah. I didn't have to go to campus then like with my cane or anything. And this is just like, this is just a, uh, what was it called? Like a fucking, it's like a two year, college you know what i mean like two-year Your degree associates. Like, yeah to get um why can't i can't blank on the name of that but uh because i had to get my grades up <clears throat> to get into like a better school because i literally had like a d minus oh, in high school college because thank you yeah community yes. college so like i had to just do that and then i was like oh yeah i'm just get my associates here if i get a job in the airport that so was the aviation management two years or four years two years just a two-year oh okay yeah. and then so you were able to how old were you when you went to school back to school to school? i was 21 hey calvin i was 21 22, i was like 23 and you could see fine at that point in the beginning yeah decent like i could, i i was like driving to school most of the time <laughs> and then like my vision got worse and i was just taking my bike to school i was biking to school it was like <clears throat> it's like two miles from my living at my mom's I would bike to him from school and then my eyes got really bad. Um, or I don't even think I was like biking or anything. Would you try but, like, like, was it really weird at first? Like, would you try hiding your blindness from other people at all? Cause I know for me, I really tried to. Yeah. Not too then. Cause I was a little older, you know? Yeah. I and that. then I was like, kind of accepting. I didn't use my cane. Like I was a little weird, definitely a little weird about the cane. Yeah, that's that's the number one thing I think is the cane. Yeah, it's getting used to the cane. Yeah, and you you kind of walk weird and shit when you're not using it. Like you walk awkward, more awkward. Because yeah, you're trying to figure things out with like your feet and like just like looking yeah. super <laughs> close to stuff, and it's just not realistic. Did you yeah. have any gnarly like incidents like not using the cane and like you're just like, oh man, I might need to use the cane, dude uh no i don't think so i mean i think i told the story about where i fell in the river i tell that story no yeah it might have been one we lost i'm so if not what? i'm sorry but I, we were up north and we stay on this uh campground and like some state land and it's like like 50 feet from this like river and this is like or <laughs> this is like early spring it's like april so it's it's still cold. Like the snow just melted. You know what I mean? Ice just melted. <laughs> so we're like hanging around the fire. And then I go and walk off and I go pee to go pee in the woods. And I'm just like walking slow, walking slow, another step and just whoosh, drop. This is steep bank. And I go right in the river, dude. <laughs> and like they hear this like super loud splash and all my buddies come running over like, dude, you all right? I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like in shock. I'm like, whoa, Yo. dude. And they just like reach their arms down and pull me up this bank, dude. And I'm just literally so no. dude. <laughs> and I, I was, I, that made like me mad. I was pissed. Sweatshirt or what? Oh, I like, I had like jeans, boots, and like shirt and like a oh, thick, God, like a food, thick button dude. up, like nice Volcom flannel. Oh, Volcom. and I went in like, yeah, I was like submerged for a second, like in, dude. Oh, dude. And I just popped up and was like, holy Bone shit. In pocket or what? Uh, I don't think I did. I must not have. Yeah. Oh, must man. not have. That my phone. Is cra- How old were you? That was probably like 24 or something like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. I was pissed, dude. That was like, I was mad, dude. I was like, what, dude, did you what? Any, like, did you have any at school where, like, you'd, like, you missed a step or, like, you went to go sit in your seat or, like, try to find a seat? It was just embarrassing. Yeah, nothing like that, no. Because I would always, so I'd enough, if it, if it was, if it's, like, a well-lit area, 
I could, no, I could get around. Ridiculous. Like I still worked, I worked in a deli and I was slicing meat on a meat slicer and I was legally blind. That's crazy. So I had like enough central vision at that time, like a little bit of central where I could have that detail, you know, so I could, mm-hmm. I could function in like a well lit area. It goes from the inside out, right? Like the central. <laughs> Somewhere. That's like Bishop's was like, Justin like, Bishop's like that. Like another blind skater. Something. <laughs> something. Yeah. My mind's like peripheral. <laughs> But yes. dude, I yeah. used to try so many different tactics, like because I, my first. <laughs> oh, I have a good story about going it. Yeah, I really got. No, go ahead. Yeah. Well, no, I was just gonna say, like, my first like six years or kindergarten to like sixth grade, right? I went to a school for the blind in Philadelphia, mm-hmm. so the only other interactions I had with like sighted students was it was always connected to another sighted school. Like uh-huh. the the school for the blind was so small, but we always had our separate like building. And we would, once we were independent enough and they taught us enough skills, we'd be able to go over to the sighted school for like two classes out of the day or something. Right. To like gotcha. get us used to being in those environments. Yeah. So it was really helpful, but they were all kind of used to like us being blind or whatever. And you know, right. so I go to my public school in seventh grade and I'm like the only blind kid, right. That's ever been there really. And I have my own separate room for all my Braille books. Cause there's so dude, one, my math book was like 45 yeah. volumes just for one book. <laughs> and literally it was disgusting. I would have to go to the teacher before class and be like, what pages are we doing today? So I'd have to go find that book. Oh my god! Yeah, so like, and I got, to, I was at the age where like, dude, I was trying to fit in so much, and like, I just wanted to like, you know, talk to girls. I wanted to be cool yeah. with like the like boys, and like, I just wanted to fit in, and I didn't want to be labeled as the blind kid. I didn't want any blindness mm-hmm. attention. And I used to like, I, I used to have an aide that would come in every once in a while to like give me like um, handouts in braille and stuff, and I'll never forget. One time I was so so I used to like put my books like on my lap and stuff like my braille books and like trying mm-hmm. to pretend, dude to the point where I had so much anxiety. This created so much social anxiety. Like I used to take handouts, like when teachers would give handouts out in print, just to look normal. I would pretend right. like I was. You're looking at take a pencil <laughs> and pretend like I was writing on them, and, and I was writing nothing. Just scribbling it was so bad and literally and i was just like no one knows you know and i'll never forget this aide comes in during math class we're working on some like charts and she comes in dude with this board like this huge board to the point where she had to put together three desks for me to like sit at and put this board on to read this and chart like my chart. face is like blushing dude i'm beat red i can't believe this is happening i remember like i was just like no one else like probably cared at all right but right. i'm so embarrassed and i'm so mad i remember i left class and i was like I went home and I was I was literally so angry. I was like, I'm never going back to school. Like, this is so messed up. They're gonna embarrass me like that, you know? Blah, blah, blah. I was <laughs> so angry, dude. And I was just and I used to just <coughs> you know, not accepting those tools and shit, like that yeah. really slowed me down from learning quick like quicker than I could have at that point in time, you know? So yeah, I can definitely cool. I would have probably been the same way for sure, because I did not like Oh, just like being like something like yeah separate so my, like my spanish teacher out, like in down. seventh grade said this is on a lost episode she said uh so we already had another anthony when i got there in seventh grade so like he was antonio in spanish class and like so i got to pick my spanish name so i was simone like simon and <laughs> Like, so why did you pick Simon? My middle name, dude. Oh, okay. I don't know. Really I was just like, whatever. <laughs> and Simone, you know? And then, like, she'd always make me be Simone and Simone Dice, like Simon says. <laughs> 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 and uh, I'll never forget this day, though. I'm sitting in class, you know? And I'm like, like, I just, all I want to do is fit in. And I'm like, I used to play, like, humor, to, like, be the class clown to try and, like, combat mm-hmm. that like anxiety and stuff and i hated that part of my life like feeling all that that i mm-hmm. did to myself and 
uh, I'm sitting there and she's like, it was something about like a handout or a quiz or something. She's like, now Simone, I know it takes you a lot long. And she would talk to me slow, a mm -hmm. lot longer to process things than everyone else. So you could take all the time you need. And oh my I'm just god! So mad, dude. Like seven, like thirteen years old. You know, like this shit is. Come on, like, can you do this on the side, please? That's why you need, like, yeah, that special training for those teachers, dude. You don't know. It's brutal. I'm. It takes you longer to come. <laughs> I'm so thankful. No, I it went doesn't. To that school that my parents like, they did the research, and you know, far yeah. to go to that school where I was given like, they didn't treat you like like that you know they didn't coddle you either they were like you yeah. gotta figure this shit out you're no one's gonna hold your hand through life here's mm -hmm. the tools we're gonna teach you pay attention and you know soar like go on your own yeah and like, what do you remember the first word you read in braille uh actually yeah i think it was there was this book it was called like we run or run go run it was something but the words go or run was one of the first words go or run <laughs> it's so weird it was this little rectangular braille book and it was like for learning braille i'll never forget it. and i thought learning braille was so cool and i used to try and preserve yeah, I love all the site i had though like i remember i had this thing called a cctv uh -huh. it's like a big so magnifying it looks yeah. like a, a tv so there's a tv screen and it sits on top of this giant metal thing with a tray underneath and it uh you turn it on and this uh lights light up the tray and there's a magnifying thing on that above mm -hmm. it too and you can like zoom in and stuff on this like tv screen and you can turn the like change the color. how many how many x did you have on oh, that dude, bad boy like 12 uh, whatever x it went up to that's what i had it at like so yeah, yeah. i would do anything to be like normal like were you reading like normal. one word at a time one like three letters at a time three letters, like yeah. it was i remember reading reading a um i just wanted to be normal dude so like i would buy like uh. a print book at the bookstore i remember getting a dragon ball z like book or something <laughs> dude and i remember reading that thing under my cctv in the kitchen in my like parents house and just thinking i was so cool you know and like reading yeah I just it's crazy having those memories of like being able to see like when i think back to my site then dude i could see perfect but i couldn't like i had 20 right. over 400 yeah. like to, to now it's like dude i would do anything to give get some of that, that yeah i think about that too like, i don't even bit. think of that as blind like i would be like dude why were you complaining about being blind back then you weren't even fucking blind yeah like, yeah so it's, just, it's kind of like a rem like reminder like be grateful for what you have you know yeah I'm exactly. great, like and, and i can't even complain about what i have now because you know yeah and we're used to it now and just we're good it live could be worse too yeah oh yeah and first word I read was math. Math. Oh yeah, I had I had like these little they're like little square, almost like scrabble pieces. When I was like I was just reading learning Braille on my own. You didn't and learn like, at VRT school? Yeah, but this is before VRT school. How quickly did you go to VRT school after aviation school? Yeah, a while. Because I Oh, okay. I finished that and I was like, oh, I need to switch careers. And I did went for another year for uh, the massage therapy. And then I worked oh, for yeah. a year. And then you did the massage therapy for like Yeah, I worked for a year. And then I went back and did like two years to finish the bachelor's at Eastern. And uh, kind of hopped around for a bit. But then just figured, then I just did my <coughs> bachelor's in psychology. And then it was so you were blind at that point though, right? You couldn't read. Yeah, that that time I was blind. That's when I learned all about. Oh man! The, how hard it is and the annoying process it takes to to get have all your books and actually dealing with like the accessibility department in school and all that. Oh, that sucked. Rude. <laughs> did did you do you ever regret like? Did anyone ever try to tell you to learn braille before you went blind? Yeah, people who recommend it, like, yeah, I should do your training and stuff like that. Yeah. Do you ever regret not doing it? Um, That, no, not really. Because I had my cane training, I think, at a good time when I had a little bit of sight. 
But I mean, I learned like the Braille alphabet and like grade one Braille by myself through the Hadley program where they just mail everything to you. Oh, that's crazy. I just did that on my own. So I already had a grade one. What like, was the decent. first lesson? First re- re- lesson is just like tracking, like just running your fingers along the page. You know what I mean? Like going in a straight line. Different. Uh, so they it, have like the lines and boss. It would just be a line. Yeah, yeah just yeah, lines yeah, and yeah. boss. And yep. I think that was like probably like the first lesson. And then it was like, yeah, like, then they did like, I think like two, two or three letters, you know, per lesson. And then you would like read them and then he'd write them with a slate and stylus and then mail them in. But I think I, I even just did it like by email. I said, you know, a.1, mm-hmm. p, you know, dot one, two, stuff like that. I have memories of like before I would go to bed, my dad would like have it in front of him and he would go through the alphabet with me. Like we would go A dot one, B mm-hmm. dot one. And we'd always have this thing with J. I don't know why, but it'd always be like we'd always emphasize it's two, four, five, like dots two, four, mm-hmm. five. We'd always be like two, four, five. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Thanks. So your dad's probably got your dad's probably got the alphabet now. No, huh? he's got he's just got J left, dude. He's just got J. Uh, that's it. I'll never forget J. two, four, two five. four five. That's, that's hilarious. One of those funny things, you know. Oh, but the funny story. I was walking oh, yeah. at Eastern. <clears throat> I was uh like waiting for my class to start. And I fucking like I, I wasn't like not, I didn't realize at this point that before your class starts, there's probably another class in going on in that classroom. Right. So I like, I go and like, I'm kind of walking down the hallway and then I walk in the door and I realize that there's a class going because <laughs> the, the professor like didn't stop. He like kept oh, talking no. and I was like, Oh no. <laughs> so I just like tried to play it off and just like, kept walking because there's two doors to get in the room <laughs> so i just like kept walking and like wa- i walked, walked in one right door, door and right out the next one. <laughs> <laughs> like so stupid dude like oh, oh my god no. dude That's that so stuff funny. i get like super embarrassed like that stuff i get really so embarrassed, embarrassed with stuff like, like oh my god i walked i should have just been like sorry and turned school. around <laughs> Oh man, I've walked into a classroom in high school and said the teacher's name while class is going on, and then be like, "Anthony, you're in the wrong class." I'd be oh, like, he's like, oh, "God damn God. it!" <laughs> Come on, dude. Those would be the literally like, I would the feeling I would get. I, I, I dude, it, it's it's like haunts me. This feeling. It's like yeah, that my, feeling is lot. Yeah. My. I get like butterflies all through my body. Like my stomach tightens up. My face mm-hmm. feels like it's sweating. Yo, yeah, it gets so hot. My, my <laughs> face feels like it's twitching. I'm just like, just get me out of here. Just get me out of here. Just get me out of here right now. Yeah, I did a lot of like, I would always show up super early. Find, I'd be the first one there and like find my seat, like first day of class. Right. <laughs> And then always just like make sure I went to oh. that same spot. I hated when they did like group things. Yes. They'd be like, all right, let's get in a group. Everyone just find somebody. And he's like, oh my God. Dude. And then dude, I can't. So I'll just hang out here until somebody. There were so many classes in high school that like you could just get by, you know, like it oh, didn't yeah. matter. And those classes were the ones that I literally, I'm not kidding, dude. I would pretend like I was engaged, like involved, like by using these stupid print handouts and pretending like I'm yeah. looking at them. I didn't even know if it was upside down or, or right yeah. side up. And like, and then we get into the groups, like you said, and I would freaking like, dude, the groups would terrify. I'd be like, basically everyone knew who I was. It's just like the blind wrestler and like, yeah. just take care of me essentially. And they'd be like, yo, it's all good. I got you. Like, and it would just be bad. And then, you know, I had to learn real quick. Yeah. yeah, I did get a lot of slack though in yeah. college. Like, a lot of like, slack. can I just take this test online and just take it online and look at all my notes? And shit, yep, like exactly. <laughs> You're like, no. And then it's like, where is this getting me? You know, yeah, that's, uh, I aced everything though. I got like 4.0 and shit. Yeah, yeah, graduated magna cum, magna cum laude, baby. That's 3 cool. 9 grad school. That's an accomplishment though, from like. 
It was, dude, there were so many days, so many days in my bachelor degree where I was just like, dude, I just want to walk out of here and just leave. It was just so, like, just the most bored. Like, is this going anywhere, dude? Sucked. I dread that feeling. I'm just having to go back to school, dude. I was just at such a dark point after wrestling stopped for me after the, during the concussion and stuff in college mm-hmm. it just put me in such a dark place where i was like what am i doing like i yeah. I'm, just, I'm just literally going through the motions at this point and i i'm so unmotivated to do anything and i really had to like go and dig deep and like do some soul searching i guess and you know mm-hmm. go through some shit like do you write that counselor letter yet dude no yeah right here i'm gonna, do it. I'm gonna write it up for you never forget it dude Braille. So see, you're fucking. I wish I learned Braille as like a kid, dude. So I was like That's super I mean. fluent, That's man. Because kind of <laughs> like, if you learn that. When parents ask me, you know, like, what do you recommend for me to do for my kid that's blind? Like, one of my main. This is what my parents fought for, and like, I'll fight for kids in the future. Is like mm-hmm. Braille education. It is super important, no matter how like digital things yeah. are going. Dude, day to day life, like even going to a hotel, it's just important in your independence in life. Mm-hmm. Like, what are you gonna be trapped in an elevator by yourself and call like some freaking? Like, you're gonna face my eyes. someone when you, yeah, you have no <laughs> service. Like, what are you gonna do? Uh, elevators, yeah. You know, yeah. you gotta learn how to cross the, sh- the streets. You know, you gotta learn all these tools. Dude, I love my cane training, dude. So much fun. You are very. Uh, I want to go back, dude. Just to go cane, back. Your cane skills are really good. You'd be a good, uh, even mobility instructor. Oh man, yeah. Yeah. I thought about doing that too. It's like a whole other year. I was like, nah. yeah. Some people double majored. <laughs> Wasn't trying to do that. I remember learning O and M, and I I thought it was so stupid. I was like, I'm not learning this cane thing because at the time I could see like where I thought I could see, you mm-hmm. know? and like I was like, this stuff's stupid. And then like <laughs> once I when did you finally accept the cane? Uh, I was slow. Like they gave me a cane when I was like legally blind, and that sat in my house for like years. But, like I I really didn't need it. Like I was still like mm-hmm. I want to say I might even no, I must not have been. Huh? I must have been driving. I feel like no, I was legally blind, so I must have. Been. But I was still like riding my bike get and stuff. Get out of the car and whip out your cane. Yeah, still riding my bike and stuff. I drove with a blind lady. I was legally blind. Oh my god! You know, where, like you use like the monoculars and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. You can yeah. still get your license and the special mirrors and stuff. Oh man! But what was I just saying? Yeah, it took me a while. Like, and then like, I then I like I had to use it. And then I went to, um, it wasn't soon after that I had to use it that I went to O&M training and then I was hyped on it. I was like, oh, this is sick. I thought, I felt it as like, I got my independence back. So it was really like super powerful to me to do that. Not exactly. I know exactly what you're talking about. Cause not using my cane for so long, trying to like hide it and you know, just whatever it stopped me from doing a lot of things in my life yeah. and like going to a lot of places because I was not confident that I would yeah. get around. All right. And like, I would have to rely on someone and all this stuff. And it doesn't have to be that way. And it, I just, I regret, you know, those things I missed out on and stuff. But when I think when I first like accepted, it was basically out of necessity when I started going to, you know, traveling around the country and world, like traveling out of the country, out of the mm-hmm. country with uh, judo and stuff. Like, I was traveling on these flights by myself, going to different countries and new places I'd never been ever, and it was scary. So I'm like, you know, I need my cane, and thankfully, I did have all that training. And my mom was an O and M instructor as well after I was born and stuff. Like, learned all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So, so I oh, had no choice whether to be good. Your at mom's O and M, dude. Yeah. I don't think I knew that. Yeah, I think maybe you might have told me when, that. After, what? After, after, um, there was a huge, the huge court case I talked about. Um, that was like when I was going trying to uh, get transportation get into the school to Philly. 
No, no. When I was trying to get transportation from Spring Lake, New Jersey. Yeah, what's your boy's name? Who used to drive you? Jerry, dude. He's the Jerry. Man. Jerry. Dude, man. <laughs> Shout out to Jerry. Wait all day. And chill, <laughs> dude. He used to take me to Burger King on Fridays. He was the man. Dude. What? DVDs, dude. He had DVDs in the car. Jerry was the best, oh, dude. Yeah. What would you get a Whopper, dude? What would you go for? I get the chicken sandwich with the fries. Chicken sandwich. Like <laughs> Jerry. So Jerry was the man, dude. He. Yeah. Like, he let me tell like funny like joke like bad jokes I heard yeah, from my brothers yeah. and stuff. Like, <laughs> Jerry got me my Italian horn, uh, like the good luck. Oh yeah, horn, yeah, the gold, the gold chili, chili pepper. pepper. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, uh, so like there was the court case for me to get trans. So at the time, my mom and I would live in the apartment during the week in Philadelphia, and well the rest of my family was home and my dad was at work. So like it sucked for everyone, you know, and mm -hmm. it was just so I could get this education to learn all this stuff and be independent. And then there was, they were fighting for me to get transportation from, you know, home to there. And yeah. the court case went on for a couple like two years, I think. And all these people came to bat and fight, you know, uh, like people from the NFB and like all these like mm -hmm. eye doctors and stuff. And then after, the court case was over when we had won and like got transportation stuff for all the like hardship and stuff and like everything we went through like because it was crazy for a while like did they like, give did they do like a final like hearing and the judge gave the reading of what the decision was yes it was huge. damn yeah so you guys were all sitting there just waiting for what all, he was gonna say yeah this was like the first thing like this that was like so there was so much attention on it that it was like in the newspapers all over and stuff and like it was kind of like uh i don't know it, it was almost like you know the start of like a movement basically it was crazy well that's that's like real advocacy right yeah there. yes yes it was and talk about you know going to places early and stuff this guy joe ruffalo the guy he's the guy first guy to ever teach me he gave me my first ever cane and mm -hmm. he came to fight for me man and this guy i'll tell you he's totally blind and he, he's it's an italian guy from new jersey <laughs> he, he comes up to philly dude my, my dad meets with him or he talks to him on the phone he's like joe uh i could really he's like ah oh, you let me know when to be there and my dad's like yeah it's, he gives him the date and the time and my dad's like joe you want me to pick you up like and, you know i'll give you a ride the guy's totally blind he's like no i'll be there and he's like, he, he gets there on his own, right? He takes the train, this guy. This guy's amazing, dude. He's, he's like, pushed legisla legislation for the blind and stuff. Like, and Show he, rough or he, Is he a lawyer or is he just, like, a work dude? Or? No, dude. He's just, just an advocate. Boy, he was in the army yeah. and stuff. He's, in, he's amazing. But uh, he he goes to the – we're at the courtroom and, like, he meets with my dad and it's before any of, this, any of the court starts and he's like – all right, Bo, tell me everything in the room, how it's set up, and walk me to the front. Let me know where the front is so he knows, like, where to go without – And he yeah, walks yeah. up. So when it's time for court, he walks up there, like, flawlessly by himself, all confident, <laughs> and, like – And he's like – Because they were fighting. The other fight was, like, to, for – You know, it was from – That's why it was my uh, real advocacy because it's for me to, like, get Braille education and stuff like that. Like, yeah, it was yeah. really important. And we won the case – so one of the things they gave was uh, they actually gave my mom a scholarship to Pennsylvania College of Optometry. And she what? Go yeah, so she ended up going there literally after having five kids going back to school. And she would I remember and she worked so hard and became a mobility instructor and made all these connections along the way in the blind like world. Like, yeah. Doctors yeah. And, and different types of people. And, you know, really – gave me like the tools and, and connections I needed to keep like succeed and like, showing me like successful people in the blind community and things like that. And Damn. wait, so tell me about the day they made after two years of fighting this case, the day like the hearing was or the what do they call that? The, uh, the uh, verdict or something? The verdict. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure. I can't remember it to be honest. What? I feel like what it was, it was like everyone just cheered or something, dude, I, dude. I remember like being in a courtroom and shit just going down. Like that's what I remember. And I remember our lawyer, like this guy was the man. I remember just like I didn't really I was too young to know exactly what was going on. Yeah. Because I was like in 
kindergarten. Kindergarten. Oh, first. you were. Oh, you were really yeah, young. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. So my, uh, I just remember like going out to dinner with the guy. Like, I gotta ask your stuff. dad and your mom. Yeah, about you that, really dude. do. I, I, we got to interview them on here actually. One yeah, day. it'd be a really good interview. Um, but and then after, even after that, my sister, my oldest sister Maya, she went and became at the same school. Went and became a, a optometrist. Oh wait, were your mom and sister going to school? No, no, same? not at the oh. same time. No. <laughs> it's like, hey, mom. <laughs> so your mom got her bachelor's. Did she have an associate's before that, or did yeah, she go no, through she, all of that? She had her bachelor's and associate, associates and bachelor's, and then she got her master's at PCO. Okay. So I think it was like three years. I'm not sure. Yeah, in the O and M or in yeah, something else. In too, the O and she like yeah. learned, she learned how to use a com- like literally she didn't know how to use a computer she learned to all oh, really? to do I remember her being so frustrated some nights and just oh. figuring it out dude and it's I, a grind dude yeah that school is just like just big, jump through all these hoops and then you get this degree yeah. to see like the impact that I kind of subconsciously I guess had on my family like my mom went and became an O and M instructor and my sister is a yeah. freaking eye doctor like she's incredible yeah. I know your sister was a non-doctor. That's sick. Yeah. That's epic, too. I want to, yeah, I got to ask you that about that story. You can... How are you doing on time? Oh, we're good. Yeah, we're good. We got like five minutes, I think. Mean. 15 after, did I say? Yeah. Yeah. Dude. That's no, good. I've... Did I tell the story I walked in the... I think I told this one when I walked in the uh, girls' bathroom at the airport. Wait, no. I, oh, I, I know I told this, but I don't know. Yeah, I think we did say that. Yeah, oh, man. I'm trying to think of I must have other stories. I just don't remember. The blind stories? Yeah. I'm sure there's been so many incidences where that I don't even know happened. Do you know what I mean? Dude, <laughs> it's like almost running over babies or something, too. It's crazy, dude. I... <laughs> I've had people like freak out on me before and I had no idea what I did wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, what? I'm so sorry. Yeah. I had that dude trying to fight me. I think I told that in the airport. Yeah. Yeah. I tripped in him the up. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> you talked about the one dude in the bar. Oh, that one. Another one. Did I not tell this one? Yeah. Walking in the airport and my butt, we're, it was going to Tokyo. <clears throat> but we're going to Burbank to SF and then Tokyo. We tripped, this guy like tripped over my cane and like, He's like, you blind? I was like, yeah, dude. <laughs> He's like, what? you don't look blind. I'm like, yeah. He's like, He's like, what's your deal, dude? And then like my homie was with me, who I just met this dude <clears throat> on this on Adidas, Diego. They like square up, dude. They're about to fight, dude. <laughs> He's like over this, over him, because he was embarrassed that he tripped on my fucking cane. So then he's like all pissed off. But he's like, dude. He's like, what are you talking? And then he got in his face. He got in his face. He's like, I ain't no fuck boy, dude. I'm not a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> me and Shire, me and Paul and Shire are like, oh my God. Hey, it's all good, dude. And Paul's dude. like, yo, mate, chill. We're like, yeah, we're about to, we don't want to do go, getting you out of jail right now, dude, because we're leaving. Oh but yeah, that was just ridiculous. But that that was a really weird incident. I'm like, what just happened, dude? This yeah. dude got mad that. My cane went too far. I don't even. I don't even know, dude. It was oh, weird. One time I was at Great Adventure, dude. Like I was, you know, Six Flags. It's like an amusement park with like mm-hmm. coasters and shit. I was there and going on a ride with my cane, and like going through the line thing. And the guy's like, "Excuse me, son. No golf clubs allowed on the ride." Oh, <laughs> was he messing around or no? No, dude. That's the second he was time serious? I've had my cane called a golf club. One time this oh, kid called it a golf. I'm like, dude, I go to, I t- talked about this on a lo- another lost episode. I got so many <laughs> lost episodes. I, uh, <laughs> I was, <laughs> I was in Whole Foods, dude. I decided, I'm like, I'm going to Whole Foods today. I'm going to like get us groceries by myself. Uh, yeah. Do Kelly a favor, like, you know, like help our family out, whatever. Yeah. And I, like, Sometimes I get in those moods. Like, I'm yeah, like, dude, exactly. Yeah. You're like <laughs> super independent today. <laughs> 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 and like, I'm like, yo, I'm doing this. And like, I go to there, um, I have my buddy drive me. That's what happened. I have my buddy mm-hmm. drive me. And like, I go get all the stuff I need, right? For dinner, everything. And I'm going to check out. 
I'm in line and I'm, I put all my stuff up and I'm, you know, I'm going to pay. And the kid, the like guy must have been like in his twenties walking or working. And he's like, dude, I'm just curious, man. Like, like as he's like ringing my stuff up. Right. And he's like, I'm mm-hmm. just curious, man. Like what's up with the golf club? <laughs> and I was like, dude, what are you talking about? He's like, like, I'm just wondering why you're walking around with the golf club. And I was like, dude, you're kidding. Right. Like, I'm I'm blind and this is my cane. Like and he's like, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I know. I was just I was just wondering, and I was like, wait, what do you mean? Yeah, 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 I know. I was just wondering. Like, this is not a golf like, club. Is, and then he's like, I was like, uh, I was like, are you serious? And then he like went on and like kind of gaslit me to like think like, dude, I knew it was a cane. You know what I mean? But like, oh my god. And then so I leave, thinking nothing of it, dude. And I got like super like, sometimes it hits you after. Yeah, it's always felt like so. Oh, dude, the feeling! I was so upset. Like, I just felt so. I don't know what the the word is, but I I like almost crushed, dude. Like, I went out, tried to like be independent, and I was. I did, and like, but this just like made me feel so shitty. And I go home, and Kelly like notices something's up, right? And I'm like, (laughs) this fucking this kid, dude, like just pissed me off so much, like. And like the thing that this is why it bothered me so much is because Whole Foods is like a corporate thing, you know, it's a corporate yeah. business, and they like they should have some type of training on that, right? Like they should know what a blind person is, something, like what yeah. a pain is, something, dude. There's got to be some type. I of actually, like, yeah, when I worked at Target, was when I was sighted, they had like a small section on that of like how to. Right. Greet and help a vision impaired person. Yeah. Exactly. So that's what I would think, and that's why it upset me so much. I'm like, that was just like acceptable. And Kelly like calls Whole Foods, dude. She's like, <laughs> she's like, my, <laughs> my my husband's dropped the husband. My, husband, yeah, my yeah. husband just went to went there. And blah blah. This happened, and they're like, I'm so sorry. And they gave me like a sixty dollar gift yeah. certificate to Whole Foods. <laughs> <laughs> I just like it gave me once again one of those moments where it gave me like a lot of anxiety to go yeah. to like certain places and like I hate that feeling of walking in somewhere where you it, you almost every time have it in a new place you're like okay what's the vibe going to be like when what's this what's going to happen it, there's always something right or something happens yeah. oh, man. well I think in the be- I'm getting better now of like being better in the moment then but like I think in like earlier like like you said, like that feeling that we would get of like yeah. just feeling like those butterflies and being like very self conscious. Um, it takes time and time again of getting. Yeah, like that. I think of dude, it's not such a big deal. Yeah, exactly. I think in the beginning, like having those feelings, and then now when you get in situations like that, where like you you don't, it's not until afterwards where you're like, whoa, what just happened? Yeah. Like I, because yeah, I just want to get out of that situation. Yeah, is what I'm. Yes, is what I was used to. Home. I just want yeah, to, and then you start, and then you sit with it. You're like, yeah, now I'm better with on. saying stuff in the moment. Yeah, the weirdest thing I got was uh, somebody called my cane a walker. <laughs> <laughs> was that, was, was your walker? It's like what? Cane, <laughs> oh. That, and then I was running one time. Sometimes like, Ooh, what do you? I had the wheel on the end. Like you, what are you oh, like dude, measuring your hardcore. distance? <laughs> measuring your distance? I'm like. <laughs> Instead of the confused, you don't even know what he's saying at first. Like, no, it's a white cane and blind. Oh. Dude, that the cane, the running cane's a little different. I'm like, I would be if I could see and I saw someone running with the running cane. I'd be like, dude, what is that, dude? Like, well, this is just a regular cane, just oh, with the wheel yeah, on the yeah. end. Yeah, they have some weird ones that are like, yeah, like rectangles, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like a <laughs> blockier thing. But, oh, yeah. but all right, yeah, that I should be uh, four for there, guys. Another one down. I hope you guys enjoyed yep. it. Please send in your know. questions and subscribe across the board. Everything's on 4 You know what to do. Like and subscribe or don't. Yep. And, and then personal account, Dan the Mancina, Instagram, TikTok, yep. Facebook, is Dan Mancina. Find me. Um, and uh, OnlyFans, Dan Mancina. <laughs> Coming soon. <laughs> ASFvision.com. You can find everything. Sick. Did we say for Dan at four bad eyes.com? Anthony four bad eyes.com. Thank God. Got it. It's on four bad eyes.com. You know what? Yep. Thank you. Much love.
One love, baby. Keep, Keep pushing. pushing. And one love. Keep pushing. And one love from Four Bad Eyes.